Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to chat a little bit about chords, scales and arpeggios. It's often something I get asked about in the early stages of theory is what's the difference. Now if you've been doing my beginner guitar course you're almost certainly going to have started with a chord but it's quite unlikely that you stop to think about actually what it means to be a chord. It is simply a group of notes played together. Now you've probably been learning your nice chords so C chord, D chord, G, but really it can be any group of notes at all. You could put down any kind of weird combination. I've got no idea what this is going to sound like. And that would be a chord. This is a chord. A11 with an E bass if you're curious. So any group of notes played at the same time will make a chord. Two notes together are usually referred to as a dyad. Dyad being a prefix for two. So uh, that's often the case but not always the case. Sometimes I might sneakily think of two notes as being a chord. That would be subject to people's opinions. So on to scales. Now scales generally have quite a sinister overtone. I didn't like the idea of scales. So the whole the picture of practicing scales up and down is seems just like a really boring horrible thing to do and no idea why you'd want to do it when playing music is all about fun and creativity. But learn the right way and for the right reason scales are massive massive fun. It's as simple as you know if you're learning a blues for the first time if you learn the minor pentatonic scale you're able to improvise and jam in a blues context more or less straight away. Scales are really just a kind of a musical alphabet. They're not something that should, you know, people use to torture children with, or it shouldn't be. And one of the important things that we'll be doing as we go through this course is learning how and why to learn scales, and then how to make mus music with them right away, because I don't want you just practicing things and learning things without really understanding their purpose. Scales are often used for technique development, and in that kind of situation you might play the scale up and down over and over again, but it's not really the scale's fault, and it's not really the scale that practicing you're working on a particular technical element like the synchronization between the two hands or uh, you know a technical thing like not lifting your fingers off the fretboard too much that kind of thing it's not the scales fault scales are an amazing thing for making music when you learn about them in the right way now the last thing today to chat through is arpeggios which are another often misunderstood little beast an arpeggio is the notes of a chord played one at a time. Now when you practice arpeggios you would play them normally strictly in order but you wouldn't necessarily do it that way when you were playing them for real. So for example if we look at uh, an A chord, regular A chord, uh, that has the notes A, C sharp and E. In, this, in the chord when we play it all at once we're playing A, E, A, C sharp in this particular case. We could play A chord up here where we're playing A, E, A, C sharp, E, a. But you notice when we play the chord, aside from the fact that we're playing them all at once, we're not playing them in order. So if we played this, that wouldn't really constitute an arpeggio, although the term arpeggiate is often used. Okay, so if I'm playing this, where I'm picking out the notes sometimes one at a time, that might be described as arpeggiating the chord, but it does not an arpeggio make. An arpeggio would normally be played quite strictly in the order of the chord tones. In this particular case, we're going to learn more about this much later on, or a little later on, actually next grade. Um, the, the notes in our A chord would be the notes A, C sharp and E, the root, third and fifth. And to play an arpeggio, we would play them one note at a time. So we'd play root, third, fifth, root, third, fifth, root. That would be playing an arpeggio. Now all three of these things are very, very useful. We're going to be encountering them in different guises along our music theory journey, and we'll explain more about them when you come to each one. But I just wanted to give you a kind of a rough understanding of each of those three elements so you're not confused by any of that as we go along on our way. See you for much more very soon. I hope you're enjoying the ride so far. Bye-bye.